back. Today we're going to continue our little journey making the Blue Kentucky Moon sweater. And I wanted to show you here the original, okay? Here we have the original blue sweater. And this is the seam right here. You can barely see it right here. But this is the back panel. Well, that's what we're working on here. So far, we've done four rows of the darker color, and I have done two rows of this light color. Now, for the sake of the tutorial, I've been using a lighter colorway, and this is done with three, again, three different colors. Um, now, remember, your, yours might be a different color than mine. Um, you might be doing different uh, number of rows, just depending on what size you're making it. But the bottom line is we are making this back panel to fit side to side on your body. Okay, so let's continue on and take a look at our next step. Okay, so far we have written down on our pattern, because remember, we are actually learning to write a pattern so that we can better read patterns later on down the road. And I have kind of drawn a little example here for you, and I have gotten up to row six. And I have done row six, and I had written down here, no, nope, you can't even see it here, uh, that you should, I have on my sweater from top to bottom 66 double crochets all right now i have i'm going to turn mine over and as you can see i've taped my uh, bands here my uh, uh, yarn bands to this uh, paper here but i'm going to continue writing in here we are going to start the next row but remember last time we had cut our yarn we had cut our yarn because I did not have the extra yarn um, to to make uh, because I'm using this the pink color on both this side and here on this dark side and I wasn't able to use the same cake for both of them so what I did was I got another cake right here and I'm going to keep this strand together here now I hope I can explain this but I'm going to keep the white and the pink together and here you can see that I've still got it connected here to the white and pink we are going to be running our yarn up the side so we don't have to cut it this is going to be easier said than done <laughs> not no not really it's going to be easy but it's just a matter of keeping track and making sure this yarn doesn't get all tangled so hopefully i'll be able to explain that so what we need to do is get out the the new cake and the dark and the gray the medium gray that we're using here let's go ahead and do that and pair them together there we go. All right, I'm going to set those aside and set those to the side. And we are just going to add our yarn right here to right here. This is our last stitch. I'm going to take our stitch marker out, put the hook in. Now, this is the easiest way for me to show you, is just to let that go, slip out just that last bit of the stitch, put the yarn back on the hook, and instead of bringing up that pink, I'm going to grab our new yarn, the pink and the gray. I'm gonna leave a little tail here. And then I'm just going to bring that up. Okay. Now for me, I like to hold it together with my thumb. While I'm rearranging all this with my left hand, I can hold that together with my right hand. I'm going to turn my work and bring up, where's the pink? Here. You see, there's my pink and white strands. 
I'm going to hold that right up here. We're not going to worry about bringing it in right now. We're not going to worry about it because we'll worry about it when we're coming back up on this side. Okay. So all we do is, ooh, chain one. Now, I think back down here at the beginning, I was explaining to you guys to chain three. I want to show you this. Do you see how, how loose this looks? To me, it looks loose and it doesn't look very nice. So I'm going to change it up. I'm just going to chain one and then you can either double crochet in there or chain two and go on to the next one. I prefer to chain one and then double crochet in the first stitch. That way it's nice and full. Do you see how nice and full it is here? compared to this one right here. I like that fullness. And besides, when I start seaming it together, there's more to catch right here, All right? So let's do that from now on. I'm just gonna double crochet all the way across. And for my count, it should still be 66 double crochets. So, Go on and finish your row and meet me on the other side. Okay, so I've come to the end here and I wanted to show you this one more time. I've got two more stitches to go. One, two. So let me go ahead and double crochet in that second to the last one. Okay, remember I showed you this last stitch here about double crocheting into the top of that chain three. All right, I want to show you how we're gonna solve this problem from here on out. Okay, instead of chaining here, instead of uh, doing our last double crochet here, remember we started it with a double crochet. So from now on, we don't have to look for that last stitch, do we? So right there's that stitch. So go ahead for now, and this will be our last time if you're doing it this other way, okay? Go ahead and double crochet in that last stitch. Now, I don't want you to do anything. I want you to set this to the side because we're going to get out our notebook, our trusty notebook, one more time. We are now just finishing up row seven. And what did we just do? We chain one, double crochet in the first stitch, double, oops, double crochet in every stitch across. and I'm gonna have 66 stitches. You might wanna count and make sure that that's how many stitches you've had, but I have 66 stitches. All right. Okay, now we're gonna start row eight. Okay. Oh, you know what we need to do? We need to change yarn here. Change color. Okay, I'm going to put that right on top. So, let's go back here. We're going to chain one, turn, and we're going to double crochet in that first stitch and all the way across. All right. Now, remember, when we come to that last stitch, let me show you this. We'll come to that last stitch right there on top is that double crochet, the top of that last double crochet. All right. And when you get there, I'll meet back up and we're going to go ahead and bring that yarn up. I'll show you how to catch it 
and then we're going to finish crocheting that round that row okay all right so go ahead and finish round eight not round i keep saying round i'm so sorry row eight finish row eight make sure that you put it in your notebook and i'll see you back here in just a minute okay so here we are again and we are now going to make our last stitch in the top of that last double crochet double crochet all right now i have already taken the liberty of writing my row eight out chain one turn double crochet in first stitch double crochet in each stitch across 66 stitches now row nine I'm already I've already written it down but I want to show you how I'm doing it I've got hairs don't want hairs in my project so we're going to chain one and turn our work Oh, got all these little ends here but all we want to worry about is this top one right here see from this previous one we wanted to carry it up so kind of finagle it if you will behind behind your work and so there it is okay now this part right here don't worry about it if if it's a little loose that's okay now I'm going to do a double crochet and I'm, I'm holding it again here. You know how I like to finagle this yarn here. So I've got my working yarn right here and the carrying yarn right here. I'm going to hold my yarn like this, holding that light color yarn behind this first double crochet right here. And I'm going to double crochet into that first stitch, catching, see how I caught it there? Catching that light color yarn. All done. Now, just lay that to the side. We're not going to have to worry about that color again until we come back to this point. You're going to double crochet in every stitch across. And then you're going to come back and do the same thing again. So this is row nine. And I have written that down here. Chain one turn, catching previous color yarns behind the first stitch, double crochet in double crochet in first stitch, and double crochet in each stitch across. All right, all right, I'm going to go ahead and I know that my next row is going to be 10. I'm not going to write anything though because I'm just going to set that aside. And I am going to continue row 10 and then I'm going to come back and do row 11. And I'm going to meet you back up here again because we're going to change colors in row 12. Okay, so here we are at the last stitch. We're going to chain over, going to go ahead and double crochet in that last stitch. And like I said, the easiest way for me to do this is to bring out that last part of the stitch, get my hook through there again. Now I'm just going to leave this alone, just leave it dangle, and this, this white thread, their lighter color thread, I'm going to bring up and draw through. For my last double crochet and now we are ready to go on to the next row and just go ahead and do it with our light color and just continue the row and we're going to come back across and then we're going to change again if you are doing this same um, combination here four two four so that when we come back over here the second row if we're going to change the color again to go back to this darker of the colors okay so row 10 let's count them up just to make sure we're on the right round or row why does it keep saying round so one two three four five six seven eight 
9, 10. So, row 10, I am going to chain 1, turn, double crochet in first stitch, and each one across. Row 11, change colors. See here, I'm just putting CH for change, but you know, other, other times we're going to use CH for chain. So you write whatever you want. Change colors. If you want to write it all out, that's great too. So change colors. Um, uh, chain one. Turn. Double, double crochet in first stitch and in each stitch across. And I should still have 66 stitches. All right, gang. So we're just going to do the lighter combination, come back across, and we're going to change colors the same way we did right here. We're just going to pull the darker color up, drop the light color one, and continue on repeating this pattern until it reaches the desi desired width that we want it to have. Now, you should have written all that down in your notebook the last time. So I'm going to be having three, oh, excuse me, one, two, three, four, five sections of this dark and one, two, three, four sections of the light when I'm, when I'm all done. So what I want us to do is to go ahead and finish up this back panel and in our next video we are going to tackle the front panels okay we're just going to do the front panels and basically that's all we're going to be doing is doing we're going to be repeating basically the same thing that we have been doing on the back panel except for making two of them so i hope you enjoy making the rest of this back panel and we will see you next time